Well, the new year is here. I've heard many things about this new year. A lot of things I've heard on the news I don't even want to repeat. An election year for our nation. They say that great changes are going to come. But who really knows? What is going to happen to U.S. relations around the world? What is going to happen to the U.S. dollar? Where is inflation going to go? And what in the world is the Fed going to do? Probably the Fed doesn't even know. Nobody really knows the answer to any of these questions. We don't know what's going to happen in this country. We don't know what's going to happen in the world. We simply don't know. But let me tell you what we know. Romans 5, verse 6. This is what we know. When we were yet without strength, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man would one die, yet poor adventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commended His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Then he said in verse 9, we're justified by His blood so we can be saved from the wrath of God. The wrath of God is coming on this nation and on many other nations. That's something we know. We can escape the wrath of God that's coming on millions because of the blood of Jesus Christ. We don't know what's going to happen in our nation. We don't know what's going to happen in the world. But we know that God loves us. When we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's how God commended. That's how God manifested. That's how God showed that He cares. Jesus said in John 3.16 that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son in the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might have life. That's what we know. Do you know this can be a better year for you? Do you realize this can be a year for God? We can all make a commitment today. This is going to be the year for God. Not for me. Not for my family. This is going to be a year for God. We can all make that choice. To make that choice and to make that really happen, there are just a few things we have to understand. And we need to understand them clearly. For this to be a year for God, That depends on relationships. Jesus talked about this in our text. Notice Matthew 22. 
in verse number 36, Matthew twenty-two thirty-six, 36, a man asked Jesus, Master, which means teacher, what is the great commandment in the law? Here this new teacher had come and taught all these revolutionary things. The land was all in upheaval over what he had said. And so this man asked him, what is the great commandment in the law? That's a good question. Even though in verse 35, Matthew 22, 35, he was tempting Jesus. Was a good question. Jesus didn't ignore his question, even though he was tempting him. He didn't need to ignore him. He answered him. Matthew twenty two thirty seven. Jesus answered and said, "What's the great commandment in the law?" Jesus answered and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, and with all thy soul. Then Jesus said, The second commandment is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. All of the Old Testament law, all of the words of the prophets that we're studying, they're all hinged on two relationships. All of them. It all comes down to two basic relationships. First, number one, verse 37. God must be the priority in your life. Not just a sweet little thing and go to church so you get your name on some piece of paper. But God must be the priority in your life. In your everyday life. In the way you live. In the way you talk. In the way you act. Is God the priority in your life? What's the first and great commandment? Verse 36, verse 37 You must love God with all of your being. All that makes up you. Must be expressed in love toward your Creator. That's a big commitment. That's a big commitment. Are you ready to make that commitment? In chapter 16 and verse 24, Jesus talked about that commitment. He said, if any man would come after me, you want to come after Christ? It's not as easy as most folks think. If any man would come after me, let him deny himself. That's probably the hardest commandment God ever gave. Deny himself. What you want. What you think you need. If any man would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. 
Whosoever shall save his life will lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall find it. Does that mean you have to be burned in a fire like many Christians in the first century? Does that mean you have to be crucified on a cross? You can lose yourself in service to God without being burned at the stake and without being crucified on a cross. Many Christians died that way, but not all of them. Then verse 26, Jesus said, For what is a man profited if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? What if this is the year that you stand before God? You don't think so. You're strong and healthy. So was I. You don't know that. This may be the year we all stand before God. No one knows that. So commitment to God is key. In case this is that year. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God. Not second, third, fourth. Seek first. Before your husband, before your wife, before your children. Seek first. Before what you want, the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Matthew 6.33 Religion is miserable for some folks. Just another burden. They find no joy. They find no contentment. They find no peace in their religion. It really be, just becomes another hindrance in their life. Just another thing to do when they already have so much to do they don't know what they'll do. The reason is they try to hold on to this ungodly world with one hand and try to hold on to the religion with the other hand. It won't work. Jesus said no man can serve two masters. Will hate one and love the other, or hold the one and despise the other. Matthew six twenty four. But to make this a year for God, it depends not only on your relationship with God, which is dealt with in verse thirty seven. But it also depends on your relationship with other people. This is where it really gets tough. Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. The second commandment is like the first. Love your neighbor as yourself. Verse 39. Matthew 22, 39. You don't think that's hard to do? My relationship with God depends not only on the way I treat God, it also is determined by the way I treat other people. 
I see how much God has loved me. Do you see the love of God? 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9. He said, you know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Though we were rich, yet for your sakes He became poor, that you through His poverty might be made rich. Do you see how much He loves you? Do you not want to return that love? Why would any conscious person spurn such love? But how do you return love to a being you've never seen? You've never touched Him. You've never felt Him. And yet you're told to love Him with all your heart, mind, and soul. And you've never even seen this God. How can you do that? The Bible tells us. The Bible tells us. 1 John chapter 5, verse 3, This is love for God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous. John 14, 15, Jesus said, If you love Me, keep My commandments. First John chapter 2, verse 3, Hereby we do know that we know Him if we keep His commandments. First John chapter 2, verse 6, He that saith He abideth in Him ought to walk even as He also walked. As Peter told us in 1 Peter 2, 21, He left an example for us to follow in His steps. So we show our love for our Creator by submission. By casting down our pride and our stubbornness before His throne and accepting what He says, not what we feel. That's how we show we love Him. And in loving Him, this is what He has said. 1 John 4, the last two verses. In loving God, this is what God has said. If a man says he loves God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For how can he love God whom he has not even seen and does not love his brother that he has seen? Made in the image of God. You don't love those made in God's image, how can you, then how could you love that God? And this commandment, 1 John 4.21, have we from Him, that he who loves God loves his brother also. Look at verse 7. 1 John chapter 4, verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And he that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. But look at verse 8. 1 John 4, 8. He that loveth not does not know God. For God is love. You can do all you want to do. Take communion, come to church, do all you want to do. But look what this says. He that loveth not does not know God. 1 John 4, 8. So I can go through all the activities, attend every worship service that's ever been, and if I don't treat other people properly, it's all for nothing. Is for nothing. Look what he said. In this was manifested the love of God. 1 John 4, 9 toward us. In that while we're yet sinners, He gave His only begotten Son for us. Here in His love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and gave His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Then look at verse 11. Beloved, if God so loved us, If 
God so loved us. We ought also to love one another. Jesus said, Hereby shall men know that you are my disciples if you have love one for the other. John 13, 34, 35. This life is hard enough. This life is tough enough. Why do you want to make it a little harder on somebody? Life is tough. Why, why would you want to make it a little bit tougher on another human being? We can encourage people. We can brighten people's lives. We can encourage people to do better in their Christian lives. Sometimes all it takes is just a sweet little smile, a kind word. Sometimes that's all it takes. To make somebody's whole day be better. Don't you want to do that? Don't you want to make people have a better life? My relationship with God is directly related to my relationship with you. To my relationship with my fellow man. Galatians 6. Galatians 6, verse 7. Paul put it in these words. He said, don't you understand that you're going to reap what you sow? You don't understand that? He that sows to his flesh shall of his flesh reap corruption. He that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for we shall reap if we faint not. Galatians 6.10 as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men. Not just the people we like. Not just the people in our small little circle. Let us do good unto all men. Especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Especially if it's a brother or sister. We're on the way to Canaan's land. The way is difficult if you haven't noticed. It's so hard for some people. Wouldn't you like to make it just a little bit easier? You can. Be you kind one to another. Tender hearted. Forgiving one another. Even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Now maybe you have all these reasons you have in your mind why you shouldn't forgive a certain person. And you've got that all figured out. You're justified. You're right. Then you stand before the judgment throne of the Almighty. And you find out, I should have forgiven them. I had all those years to forgive and I wouldn't do it. You know what Jesus said in Matthew 6? He said, If you forgive not men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will not forgive you your trespasses. So you have a brother or sister in here you cannot forgive? Then when you get to judgment, 
you understand, God is not going to forgive you. I don't care how many times you come to church. I don't care how many times you take communion. You won't forgive, you won't be forgiven. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, faith. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with its affections. And Galatians 5, 22, 23. I have to admit to you sometimes that I get so bogged down in my own problems that I don't think about other people and what they're going through and what they're going through in their lives. You know how disappointed God must be in me when I'm like that. When I am so selfish that only think about me and my family and everybody else. They just make it on their own. How that must hurt the Son of God when I think that way and when I act that way. How it must rip His heart out when His children don't even care about one another. You can encourage people. You can build people up. There have been times I've been in the greatest despondency and someone could just come and say a nice word or a nice kind saying to me and it just lifts, lifts people up. i tell you someone's got a good talent for that. It's Karen Morgan. She has encouraged me more in the last year. That's what we can do for one another. Instead of ripping each other apart and tearing each other down and finding each other's flaws, which there's plenty there to find, as Donald Trump talked about his opponent, his looks, he said there's plenty of subject matter there. Same with us. You could tear every person in this audience down because all of us are flawed. All of us are messed up because of this world of sin we live in. We can do like Paul said in Romans 14, 9. We can walk after the things which make for peace and things wherewith we build up one another, Romans 14, verse 9. For the year to be right, you're going to have to quit ignoring your sins. You're going to have to deal with them. For this year to be right, if you've never obeyed the Gospel, you're going to have to turn away from your sins and you're going to have to be immersed in water to have those sins forgiven if you want to be in heaven. And if you're a child of God, Cast aside your stubborn hearts. Repent of your sins. Give your life totally to God. And this can be a year for God while we stand, while we sing.